Hey guys, welcome back. Andrew's favorite game left, and I'm here with Aaron Armour of Wurzburg. This is by Compass Games, designed by Bruce Maxwell, and this one just now released. And I'll tell you, this box is heavy. It is freaking heavy. There's a lot in here. I don't know what's in here. We're going to pop top, figure out what we got in here. But I have heard something that has started to worry me slightly when it comes to this game. We got a couple of D10s. All right. Yep. Oh yeah. There it is. There it is. That's 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 gonna be a problem. <laughs> this is gonna be a problem right here. I can tell you now already. This is the roll book. So it's right here. Roll book. Look at this. This is not a roll book. This is a textbook. They had this wrong. Look at this. One hundred and forty-six pages of crap that is that is way too much now i heard there's the yeah let's get it right here learning the game and break it up and take it in chunks but there's there's only so much i can keep in my mind at once hell i can barely remember the kids names this one's gonna be a problem that that's just so much i mean look at this this, this is a freaking textbook, dude. I feel like I'm back in chemistry class. Oh, this is going to be... Okay. I've really been looking forward to this game, so I'm not going to hate on it too much. But, wow. Wow. I mean, that's just... That's a lot. And that's not even all of it. <laughs> what do we got in here? What do we got in here? More rules. And we got some errata here. Uh, charts and tables. Charge, we got two, oh, one for each player. Okay, yeah, so two charts and tables. And the playbook is the size of a usual rule book, all right? How many pages is this? How many pages? There's 58 pages for the playbook. This is gonna have all your scenarios and your good stuff in there, but it's gonna have some specialized rules as well. Yeah, see, this, this, this continues on. You see, it's got the the numbering system just like the rules do. And it's just continuing on what, <laughs> what they already did. Damn. Oh, this is going to be a lot, dude. This is going to be a lot to try to get a hold of. But at least all the charts and tables are in here. Now, supposedly, the way they've got this broke down is that you can kind of skim the rule book and play parts of it and and kind of learn it as you go. And that a lot of the information is here in these charts and tables so that once you understand the basics of the rules that you shouldn't have to pull out the rule book too much. Most of it should be here, I'm hoping, because otherwise this is just gonna be a lot. There's just a lot of game going on in here. And what do we have? Is this double pick? Yeah. That's that's actually a fair amount of errata. I mean, at least they caught this ahead of time, but damn, that's a lot of errata. So we've got uh, effectively four pages, two pages front and back of errata to add to this. And this is small type. But let's see what else we got going on in here. We have should be six of these counter sheets. I like it when they do this, when they have them shrink wrapped versus just shoved in the box. Uh, because otherwise these counters get knocked out and they get all discombobulated in there. And I prefer it when they've got them, you know, shrink wrap like this. So everything stays together. And it's, it's so much easier when you're first organizing the game because most of it is divided by the, the type of unit and whatnot because they're all printed together. So this blue section has a whole bunch of aircraft in it. So you've got your aircraft there. And then when it comes to units, all the same units with the same colors, are going to be next to each other for ease of printing. So it's much better when they have it printed out like that. But I'm not going to tear this open yet. I don't want to start knocking the counters around. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm not doing a good job of showing everything if I don't show the counters. That's the, the best part of the game. That's what I always look forward to seeing. I bet we got a whole bunch of counters front and back. It looks like only some, all of the, the helicopters have a, a backside. My guess is maybe that's hovering stats or something along those lines, but uh, figure it out in that huge ass rule book that's in there. Uh, looks like a collection of admin counters. These mines? What are those things? Damn, I can't even tell what those things are. 
Looks like explosions, bridges, varied minor factions maybe of units down over here. And movement counters, hasty movement, reserve movement, assault. Uh, one, two, three, four. These are counters to be ticked down. I'm unsure what those are. Could be steps, maybe? Not sure just yet. And a whole selection of different Soviet units, it looks like, down over here. And wow, wow. Okay. Whole lot more of these ticked down. These all, the, the cross ones, they all have numbers across them. One, two, three, four over here. All right, we got these one, two, three, fours, and then it looks like a whole lot of uh, five, six, seven, eight, and then we have a few that are just nines. Actually, we got a lot that are just nines, and these look like uh, dug in, so improved positions, some more bridges, some artillery pieces, rocket launchers. Yeah, it looks good. Good God, even more of these things. Half the counters are these little red uh, cross pieces. Wow, all right, interesting. They're gonna be used a lot. And our last thing, most of this seems to be admin type counters or the, uh, the majority of the units or the majority of the counters, the, the units actually occupy a, a small amount of the counters that are actually here. Uh, six sheets of them. Let's see, shattered, deliberate defense, some objective counters, HQ hits. All right, so we got a, a varied selection of counters there. That's the majority of the weight. What all else do we have in here? Oh, look at this. Here's where we start getting into the maps. Uh, the rest of these, these are going to be player aids. So sequence card two, is that sequence of play? Yeah, that's got to be sequence of play. And it looks like there's two cards. Well, these things front and back, <laughs> front and back. God, there's going to be so many phases to this game. Yeah, because there's two of these, right, for each. Yep, sequence card one, sequence card two. So this is where play is going to start, and it looks like you're going to walk down this thing, flip it over to the back of it, go to here, do the front of this one, and then go here and do the back of this one. I mean, at least it lists down where it is uh, in the rules, but damn, that is a huge sequence of play. Uh, organization for the different types of units where they're going to go. Uh, this looks like, yeah, game turn track, SAM strength, off map, uh, maybe command points, resource points, maybe. Yeah, rearm and refuel, that's helicopter track, victory points, and uh, combat support points. No idea what that is yet. Good God, there are so many player aids in this thing. Look at this, I just, I keep pulling them up. There, the Warsaw Packs organization. Chart front and back. And actually, I'll tell you what, these things come in a lot more handy than you would believe because uh, it will definitely help you get all the units set up when you're uh, trying to set up these uh, scenarios. That way, at least you've got something to reference to know, okay, if they reference the EG fourth motor, uh, mortar, ah, motor rifle division, these are the units they're talking about and more organization. Now my guess is this is gonna be the Allies version. Yeah, their organization, and it's only one-sided. NATO tracks for the same type of stuff. Helicopter, victory points, combat support points. They've got some different tracks up here for the different factions. And the Warsaw Pact planning card. Not sure how this is going to be used. Now, I believe this thing has two maps. Yep, it does have two maps. So let's fold out one of these and see how they look. I'll tell you what, feeling it now, this is nice. It is a paper map, but this is the, the poster board type material and it is sturdy. Okay, wow. 
Yeah, so it looks like we're gonna have east and west. Actually, let me turn it this way because that's gonna be up and down. But these are gonna be some huge maps. Here are little towns, roads, major highways, big city over here. It looks like this is a ridge. So hill, mountainous type terrain. There's an off map display going down here at the bottom. This gives us our north and west. And NATO is on the other side. And they do have the terrain key up here at the very top. But this is map A. Oh, we got the Autobahn in there. I love the Autobahn, the movement points uh, that you get for the Autobahn. I'll tell you, you know, it's nice that they do have it on this thicker cardstock instead of just the, the thinner ones. But the problem with that is that it, you see how it's kind of flopping back on me? You have to go through and kind of crease this thing down to get it to lay flat, plus uh, probably put plexi on it. I can't put plexi on it because it reflects too much into the camera and you guys can't see what's going on. Uh, but if you guys are playing it, I would definitely recommend putting some, some plexi down. So this looks like our, our the left side of our map. But you see both of them have the same information along the top, your, your terrain key, and then the off-map display stuff, top and bottom. And that's because there are some scenarios that are one-sided. So you'll only be on map B or map A. And then of course there are scenarios where there's both maps and they are designed to overlap each other, right? So A over here will come over and lay right along here on the edge. I will probably be doing a one mapper just so I can get it all in frame at one time because otherwise that's just gonna be huge. These are nice though. I will give it to them. Thicker cardstock for the maps is always appreciated because that thin stuff can tear uh, very easily as Gippy's gal found out the hard way for me when she tore one of my maps twice in one video. All right, but that is air and armor. There is just a lot in here, huge amount of stuff in this box. And honestly, I can already give it one little nick against it. And that's the fact that I think the box is too thin for the amount of counters that we have in here. Because you gotta think, this is flush to the top with everything laying in here perfectly flat, right? So let me, you're watching me put this all back in, right? Here's all our roll book and God, all this information. Our charts and tables, scenario book, playbook, errata, all that. We put all that back in, toss in a couple of dice, but you see, we are flush. We are to the top here, right? And I think honestly, they should give that extra inch. When, you, when you're flush to the top, once you've taken those counters out, you're never gonna get them to lay flat again. Uh, so you either have to use the counter trays or use little baggies, just depending on whatever works for you, but neither are going to fit in this box. And that's something I definitely think uh, publishers should think about when they're putting out their games. Like, okay, is this box full? Is there space left in it? If not, then the box needs to be bigger if you've got counters. If it was one sheet of counters, okay. Those you could probably get in there in a couple of baggies and you'd be fine maybe squeeze in a counter tray and just rubber band the box so it stays flat. But this isn't, this is six sheets of counters. That's gonna be what, there's almost 300 per counter sheet. I forget exactly how many counters are in here. Let's see if it says in the uh, the back of it. Uh, six counter sheets, each containing 228 counters. All right, you know, so six times 228 is gonna be a fair amount. We're looking at what, like 1300 more worth of counters. That's that's a lot that you're gonna have here in the box and that's too many to fit in there. The, the box will be bulging out with the little baggies. You can't fit a counter tray in here. And I know it sounds like I'm, I'm hating on them. I'm not hating on the, the game itself. I'm sure the game's gonna be fun, but I think publishers should build in that extra storage space in there because otherwise your choice is to either put them in counter trays and then like rubber band them to the box itself 
or do the baggies and it, they get messed up. There's just a back and forth with that that I don't like. And I would much prefer to have it easy, you know, extra space in there so I could fit everything in without having to, you know, force that crap down in there. All right, but that is air and armor. I'm telling you now, you're going to see a lot of war gamers covering this since it just went out. Mo and Kev both got theirs already. Uh, and I know they're excited to cover it just like I am. I have a couple of things ahead of it. Uh, so hopefully it'll give me some time to learn it. Maybe I'll get it uh, read by 2026, get it to the table by 2028. Because that rule book is just so... <laughs> I think that's one of the biggest rule books I've had in a game. World at War. World at War's rule book wasn't even 150 freaking pages. Uh, Lock and Loot Tactical. Black and Blue Tactical is more than that, but that's almost a game system. It's expanded over so many years, and it has a fairly good-sized rulebook. World of War 85 has a fairly good-sized rulebook. Uh, but in those, you got to think about it. You, it has this big rulebook, but once you kind of have it, then there's this whole plethora of games that you can play with it. There's multitudes of games in the lock and load system. There's multiple games in that World War 85 system. There's only one air and armor. So when you're reading that rule book, you're reading it just for this game. Not saying that's a bad thing, but this one is not going to be for the faint of heart. What did they rate it as complexity? Let's see if they were honest about it. Complexity is high. <laughs> well, yeah, it's high. Uh, I was looking for the uh, the one to ten Suitability for solitaire, high, eh, you know, high-ish. I'd put it more like mid, but, you know, high-ish. Not There's no hidden information is basically what they're saying there. I remember GMT's been a little, little goofy with their complexity ratings before. One of the games I got onto them about was uh, Fields of Fire, because Fields of Fire is a very complex game. I was playing the second one. And they gave it like a six rating. And then I pulled out another one of their games that was magnitudes easier to learn. Much smaller rule book. And it, it also had a complexity of six. It was that uh, sailing game, um, Flying Colors. And I'm like, you know, the, the two games aren't even in the same ballpark of complexity, but they're both rated at six. It's like, no, be honest about it. Be, just tell the truth. Because you don't want someone to get your game thinking, eh, it's, it's middle of the road and it's highly complex and it's just bogging their minds. At least they're being honest. This is going to be a very complex game. This is not a learner's game. This is not a beginner's game. This is expert level war gaming to get into air and armor. And that's fine. You know, there are people who really do enjoy that. I enjoy that. It just takes a while to learn the thing and get it in my stupid head. All right, but you guys stay tuned. I might try to work something out with Mo and Kev so we can hit this together instead of trying to learn the whole damn thing uh, by myself. Maybe we can do a little something with it because uh, the game does have some really cool aspects to it. So if you're into that Third World War stuff, this is going to be uh, definitely one worth checking out. All right, that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.